They were going after Ripple, spending tons of money and energy and distraction going after Ripple for something that we now know from their emails they do once the period came. We have the infrastructure. The, uh, the uh, stable coin was the next evolution of that. Marking the end of the 50-year petrodollar pact signed on June 6, 1974. In this regard, I'd like to remind you that this year, BRICS was joined by new participants, that is, Saudi Arabia, Iran, United Arab Emirates. But until that regulation changes, and like, it has to be clear, that gray area, large financial institutions are not going to operate in. I really believe with every fiber of my body that once this technology is deployed at scale, um, all the goodness around cost savings, uh, new revenues, capital efficiency, new products that are accessible to people. Right now, it shows U.S. national debt at zero dollars, debt to citizens at zero dollars, and debt per taxpayer at zero dollars as well. The guidelines of what Mika has already put into place Yes, where Robinhood is starting to really put pressure on. Up to 1871, we were on a silver standard. I think we'll all be able to figure out how to go back to silver. So I got 107 ounces of silver for every one ounce of gold. I know what's going on. It's a gut feeling, but it's being substantiated in a couple other areas that we might see gold and silver go one to one. But until that is 100% clear, we just won't operate in that area. Know what you hold? Enjoy the ride, pal. It's the if you got a baggie, welcome to the party. Shout out to the latest sub. Appreciate you stopping by, tuning in. We got the total global cryptocurrency market cap today at 2.69 trillion, down about 2.8 percent in the past 24. We got the total cryptocurrency trading volume the last day right around 111 billion. We got XRP right around 49.50 cents. Stellar XLM right around 0 0.099 10 cents. We got BTC 69,000 ETH right around 36, 37. Hundo Flare Networks right around 0 0.027. Axelar down to 89 cents. We got XDC 0 0.036. Songbird right around a penny. Stronghold 0069. We got Zahal right around 11 cents. Evernote 21, 22 cents. Taking a look at the altcoin season index currently at a 27. We need to be above a 75 for it to be a full blown altcoin season. Last time we're above a 75 was at the new year, January 2024. We got one from Flare Networks to pop things off. Ready to claim your latest Flare staking rewards, Epoch 190, 193. Stake Flare gets continuous Flare drops and voting rights. Looking for more flexibility? Scepter LS lets you stake any amount and receive all native Flare Network rewards. Check out Scepter LS. We got Mr. Man XRP, Big Brad Garland House, SEC went after Ripple. In an attempt to promote investor safety and spend tons of money. Meanwhile, SBF, FTX, were time bombs waiting to explode. You shouldn't go all in. You have to stay, right? Like, and you have to kind of fight together. The other thing I would just say is you know, the last panel was talking about what's going on in the real world right now, the same thing as free. You got to remember, my point was no report. They were going after Ripple, spending tons of money and energy and distraction going after Ripple. Or something that we now know from their emails, they do once the period came. And they were meeting with Sam Bankman Free, who was with you know, their headline is We Protect Investors. And they, you know, they had XRP related you know, people who own XRP saying, We want to sue the SEC. Yet they were, you know, they weren't protecting the FTX. I, I don't know. It's just it's maddening to me that we have a government that is you know, not in check. Uh, it's not getting better yet. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing I've heard you reference um, is the fact that leading up to the decision uh, to sue and move on, which is also what I'm still talking about, but that you really went in with an open book, right? Trying to educate them. Oh, yeah. And they, I'm sure, use that information to turn it against you. That's got to be frustrating as well to put them out there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and this is the end. This one has been reported already, but um, uh, in the first meeting I had with the FBC, it was me and David Shorter, and we didn't take a look. Yeah. Like, we were totally transparent about what we were doing. It was totally clear how we were using XRP. We were using it as a currency. We were using it. There's never any, like, we're trying to sort of hide anything. It's one of the great funny stories about this thing that you know, we can't yeah. There's a written board meeting, uh, like, a year before they sued us. And there's a question that's strategic that I think, hey, should we go and meet the MP2? Should we, you know, what's our strategy? And one of our board members would make many more. Well, you have to be transparent. Yeah, that's right. 
Remember that scene where the, the kids are hiding in the kitchen and the Velociraptor is looking in the room? The Velociraptor is going to be SEC. You want to hide. Yeah, don't go with the room. Unfortunately, we didn't take that advice. And, uh, but you know, look, and it's still on Robbie, or Chief Eagle Officer, who's going to talk a little about this. But, one of the most frustrating things is they used our transparency against us. And I think the whole industry, if we want to build trust in the industry, we all need to be more transparent. And we just did Ripple, I have said it for a long time. But then when you see a regulator use transparency, it's like, what is going on? And yet, yes, you see which is banging this sort of transparency from everybody else, all the transparency <laughs> Beautiful. Thank XRP, Ripple, Reese Merrick on the Ripple stablecoin. Ripple has spent 12 years building a cross-border offering. We have the infrastructure of the stablecoin. Was the next evolution of that? Lots of products, including a new stablecoin offering. So I'm curious as to where that target market is, because I don't think there's too much stablecoin activity in this region. So curious as to where the Ripple uh, stablecoin is targeting. So Ripple... Yeah, obviously announced that we are going to be launching our own stablecoin. I think this was a an obvious step for for Ripple. You know, the market currently is, sits at about 150 billion dollars. Um, I think it's forecasted to reach 2.8, 3 trillion by 2028. So clearly, there's firstly huge demand for um, a compliance first, regulatory kind of adapt business to kind of enter the space. I would also say that. Where we've seen kind of feedback from customers within stable coins is having a US dollar backed stable coin. 60% of global trade or global transactions are actually US dollar settled and not all of them are actually settled in the US. I think if you look at the Middle East and the GCC region, a number of uh, countries here are actually pegged to the USD. So we believe that there's definitely um, a need for a US dollar backed stablecoin to really enhance kind of cross border settlement, not only across this region, but more broadly, more, more globally. OK, and what's the, the unique selling point of the Ripple stablecoin compared to that of USDC Circle or USDT Tether? I would say that Ripple has spent 12 years in building out a payment cross border payment offering. We have the infrastructure. The, uh, the uh, stablecoin was the next evolution of that. So it actually gives our customers optionality into how they want to receive, whether it's fiat, whether it's stablecoin. Um, so really, we feel like we've got the infrastructure. This is just an additional kind of layer to that to, to kind of build off. Yeah, and there definitely is a need, like you said, especially in countries where the inflation rates are just wild. Like people, some people really depend on on these, these stable coins and a more stable currency for their daily lives. Yeah, XRP drops Saudi Arabia to end the petrodollar pact after 50 years. 24. Saudi Arabia is expected to announce that it will cease all oil sales in US dollars, marking the end of the 50-year petrodollar pact signed on June 6, 1974, which expires on June 9, 2024. What does it mean for the United States and the US dollar? The decision not to renew this pact stems from Saudi Arabia's recent invitation to BRICS and its move towards the dollarization. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has informed the Saudi government that the country will no longer accept the US dollars for oil transactions. This shift includes considerations to accept other currencies, such as the Chinese Yuan, for oil sales, as reported by the Wall Street Journal on March 15, 2022. Chad Steinberger, and there it is. Putin announces the new BRICS Plus payment system. No dollar, no SWIFT. Including within BRICS, we're working on shaping an independent payment system, system free from political pressure, abuse, and external sanctional interference. In this regard, I'd like to remind you that this year, BRICS was joined by new participants, that is, Saudi Arabia, Iran, United Arab Emirates, Egypt, and Ethiopia. With this, the share of our association in global GDP has reached 36% and the population of the planet up to has reached 45% and BRICS has tremendous potential for joining of, of new participants and such strive of stakeholders from different continents can only be welcomed by us and will support it, it's including within BRICS. 
XRP drops Citibank and other large banks won't operate in the US until there's clear regulations in place, but until that is 100% clear, we just won't operate. Regulation. Molasses? A Tory standpoint, it's not permissional for us to hold crypto, right? So until that changes, we continue to keep an eye on the market and experiment and work. We have, you know, Innovation Lab that does great work working with a lot of fintechs out there. But until that regulation changes and like, it has to be clear. That gray area, large financial institutions are not going to operate in. And I think, you know, here this week, it's been really positive hearing from a lot of the senators and legislators out there talking about the changes that are coming. But until that is 100% clear, we just won't operate in that area. Subject views, I really believe with every fiber in my body that once the technology is deployed at scale, all the goodness around cost saving, new revenues, capital efficiency, new products that are accessible to people of all walks of life will be a reality. XRP. How easy is it to apply those? career-long criteria in an industry which is nascent, like digital assets? I, I think the same principles uh, still apply, Dominic. If we can't do all this, then there's no point in, uh, in investing the time, money, and energy to do that. Like we can, you know, if this is a, a, a matter of just uh, satisfying our curiosity for something nice and new and shiny, then we can, we can do that in the, in the background. I really believe with every fiber of my body that once this technology is deployed at scale, um, all the goodness around cost savings, uh, new revenues, capital efficiency, new products that are accessible to people um, of all walks of life would be a reality. But it's going to take time. And in order for us to be afforded that time, we need to win the trust and confidence of our, our shareholders that are paying uh, for all this innovation, and we can reward them by showing, by very being very clear on the mission, uh, showing step by step success. And it's been my experience that if you show them what what the end goal is, they will come along uh, with you on that journey. But I say I think transparency is key, communication is key, uh, collaboration is going to be key. Uh, but most importantly, get very locked on the end state and not get distracted because. The beauty of, uh, it's funny, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a speech that talks about like how technology uh, has impacted uh, finance. And there used to be once upon a time, like when you came to finance, you're right, you needed to know your formulas, your ROIs, your profit margin. Right now, you got to know your bits and bytes as well as you got to know your, uh, so you're seeing that blending there and that's the new, that's the new finance of tomorrow. So what we're doing very much um, is a part, uh, part and parcel of that. But it's important to remain focused, clear on message, and deliver. Like the delivery has been key. And I don't think we've delivered enough uh, for the hype uh, that we've put in this marketplace. It's, it's, the, it's the unfortunate reality. I mean, there's more. I can't keep up with how many conferences we have. Actually, I've had, um, I've had a, a, a... Best is still yet to come. Crawl walk. Then we rock it. We got one from Echo to Truth. The U.S. debt clock updated. The U.S. national debt is at zero. It's happening. Yo, is it really happening? Check it out on the usdebtclock.org, the website itself. Right now, it shows U.S. national debt at zero dollars, debt to citizens at zero dollars, and debt per taxpayer at zero dollars as well. This is the first time we have ever seen it be at a zero amount because, for example, the other day it was showing at $34 trillion on the U.S. national debt. And what I mean by it's happening is the debt jubilee where all debt is forgiven because we already know that the system is unsustainable. This is why it's so important to know what you hold. Let's go. We have Pharaoh X33, a reset. Is inevitable since 1914 we borrowed every dollar into existence we pay interest on every dollar in existence that interest is paid into private banks and the federal reserve the world's largest banks not the government own the federal reserve the united states can't pay off its debt it can only borrow more to pay off the entrance our government created income tax so we can pay this entrance welcome to the rabbit hole welcome to your new context we got paul bear and tv people are sleeping on how big this robin hood bid stamp deal is fireworks soon the understanding that the writing is on the wall. There's a lot of opportunity here. So what do they do? They go out and spend 200 million to acquire Bitstamp. Now you think, well, why would they go that direction? A couple of points within the article that'll ex uh, kind of explain this. The exchange has a strong presence in Europe and Asia. Okay. 85 tradable assets, 
features such as staking and lending, both very key. And then of course, 50 active licenses and registrations worldwide. That's huge because what this does is it puts Robinhood at the front of the line in a lot of these regions that will require those licenses now they own them. And also it generates an immediate impact potentially on everything from staking and lending within the guidelines of what Mika has already put into place. Guess where Robinhood is starting to really put pressure on? The UK, the EU, all throughout Mika's regulation authorities. Robinhood acquires Bitstamp. And in case you missed it, Ripple president explains why the company acquired a stake in crypto exchange. Bitstamp, all rolls lead to the bridge. Know what you hold? ITM trading gold and silver might reach a one to one ratio, says Ted Provenza. He also warns that a bell ends are coming and the people need to be prepared. What is it about gold, silver, precious metals that just changed the way you look at the world, really? Like, why do you because now you believe it's essential to own uh, commodities, correct? Can we, can we go another step further? It's not a belief. It's a fact. I mean, 4000 years of history in the Bible. I mean, <laughs> before Jesus was born, B.C., 4000 B.C., up to 1871, we were on a silver standard. I think we'll all be able to figure out how to go back to silver. Um, but silver is finite. Silver's been referenced in the Bible. And every Sunday, we hold a sermon uh, by Dr. Pastor Belcher of Church Day Open Door. And every Sunday, we talk about a sermon that has to do directly with silver uh, in the Bible, more so silver than gold because of the mining ratios. We could get into that, but the mining ratios right now are about 7.1, whereas the paper ratios are 80 to 1. I saw this was happening and uh, I got out of the gold position that I was in at 120 to one. And with the VIG, I, I got out at 107. So I got 107 ounces of silver for every one ounce of gold. I know what's going on. And now as that, that ratio compresses in the opposite direction, I plan on getting out. Um, I'm, I'm, one of the reasons I'm watching this, I have a feeling, it's a gut feeling, but it's being substantiated in a couple other areas that we might see gold and silver go one to one. And if that happens, you're going to wind up with 80 times more gold than you would if you bought the gold instead of silver. Crypto's TAXRP hit the bottom of the range. Send it. At Grad Crypto, the next 41% XRP pump will be epic. Know what you hold. Know what's coming and know why. They want those XRP, XLM, XDC baggies back. Let a friend know that the greatest opportunity of multiple lifetimes is still at hand. But the trains left the station. Tick tock. TikTok. How high will you climb on that XRP rich list when that regulations are molasses? Finally breaks open. An XRP's true price is finally revealed. Big bags. Later glitches. I caught the code, packing them bags till we explode. No turning back. Got the decode, crypto to flow. Live by the code, all get exposed. Don't play no games, I put them in chains. Filling the burn. Venus gon' rain, my DNA strain, I'm not the same Move we'll pilot my face, we movin' for change Fillin' my stash, we make them pay Spiritual health, devilish will They say that the bag, the root of all evil I do it for good, so we are not equal They wanna defeat you, in school they don't teach you We crypto the bag, so we gon' eat you The transfer cash, get in on my people The transfer cash